How's everybody doing today? I hope just fine. I hope God been blessing you all week long because we got a heavenly father that just love you. I know he loves me. I know he loves you. I know he reveals his love to you all the time. You understand? The same God that sacrificed his son, Jesus Christ, so that we can have a life so that we can have salvation, so we can be delivered, so we can have eternity with him and with his Father. And that is a blessing. Not only that, he made it possible so that we can have the Holy Spirit to live in us. And that's where the blessing is that you have to understand. Having the Spirit of God indwelling in you is a blessing. And I want to give honor to God, and I want to give honor to his Son, Jesus Christ. And I want to give God for his spirit that made us be born again. Oh, it's just a blessing just to know this. And I want to thank God for his lovely words to lead us and guide us into all righteousness. Because there's no other righteousness but the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. There's no other righteousness but the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. And you have to get with that. And when you understand that that righteousness only comes through Jesus Christ, there is something that you got to understand. There is something you really got to understand and you got to receive it. And it is Christ in you. So otherwise, what I'm telling you, that the spirit of God that dwells in you is Christ in you. That's God that's in you as well. But it's Christ in you. And because you got Christ in you, now you can be victorious over sin. You can be victorious over doubt. You can be victorious over hopelessness. You can be victorious over fear. See, none of them things have to control your life anymore with Christ in you, but you got to believe in the Word of God. You got to believe in Jesus Christ, and you got to believe that He's in you. So today I decided to title this message, you got to understand, I decided to title this message, Christ in You. So I want to go through a, a few scriptures with you that deals with Christ in You. So that you can realize from God's Word that it tell you itself that Christ is in You. <laughs> Not outside of you, not surrounding you, but actually living in you. He is living in you through the Spirit of God. Through the Spirit of God. First go with me to Colossians 1. Colossians 1 verses 25 through 28. Yeah. Colossians 1. Verses 25 through 28. And I want to go through some scriptures to you today to understand this, but I want you to catch what it's saying. Then I want you to meditate on what, this, what the scripture is telling you. Understanding the word of God so that it can become a part of your life. So you can have Christ in you and knowing that Christ in you, that you can live through Christ. So that means you can let Christ reveal himself through you. That is a blessing when Christ can reveal himself through you. But these are the words where I want to start at Colossians 1, verse 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, or according to the arrangement of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. To fulfill the word of God. Then he goes on to say, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations. Let's take that word mystery out and let's put secret there. So if we put secret there, then it might become more understanding to you. See, because I, I, I kind of translated it like that and it said, even the secret, secrets, secrets, which has been hidden from ages or from time and from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints. But now is made known to his saints. See, the only way that you can understand the secrets or the mysteries of God, first you got to become a saint of God. First you got to become a child of God. And when you become a child of God, then the secrets that the world can get or understand you can. But this is the secret that Paul wanted to bring to our attention. And then it goes on to say, 
in verse 27, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this secret or mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now understand that right there. He said, to whom God will make known what is the fullness or the riches of the glory of this riches among the Gentile, which is Christ in you. See, the mystery and the secret to that is <laughs> simple. Christ is in you now. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, once you become a follower of Jesus Christ, once you are born again, you got to know this, that Christ lives in you. Christ is in you. That's the secret. And when you unfold that secret that Christ is in you, then you can start living the righteous life that God wants you to live. Then you can start honoring God the way God wants you to honor him. You can start living the pleasing God. And you can start respecting your neighbors. You can start living a righteous life instead of an evil life. Because now you go one thing, the secret is, Christ is in you, and if Christ is in you, that means he gives you power to live on the God. That means he gives you power to live on to him. That means he gives you power to be obedient to God. That means he gives you power to do the right things instead of the wrong things in life. He gives you the power to make right decisions in your life when you used to make a lot of bad decisions. But you don't have to make them bad decisions anymore because you got Christ in you, and if you let Christ lead you, and if you humble the cools in you, and let him direct your path, guess what? You ain't got to worry about faltering, because he is the head of everything, because God had given him authority of all things. So, since the, the man that have authority, or the person that have authority of all things that is in you, he can lead you into all righteousness. And when I'm talking about righteousness, I'm not just talking about the righteousness of to honoring people, to honoring God, but the righteousness to making the right decisions in your life while you're honoring God. And when you make that right decision, you will give all praise and honor to Jesus and God. You will let the world know, if it wasn't for Jesus, if it wasn't for God, I couldn't make the right thing. But you world, I gotta let you know, the only reason why I can do the right thing is because I got Jesus in me. Because I got Christ in me. And since I got them in me and I'm humbling to them, guess what? I don't make the same stupid mistakes no more. I don't do an eye for an eye no more. I don't try to overcome evil with evil and more. I don't walk around all miserable because he told me I got joy inside of me through the Holy Spirit. And I receive that joy. And because I receive that joy, guess what? I can rejoice. <laughs> I can love. I can have self-control through the Spirit all because of who is in me, and that is Christ in me. So you got to understand that Christ is in you. That's the secret that God wanted you to know so that you can overcome your shortcomings through Jesus Christ, through who is in you, the one that will give you the power to get by, the one that will give you the ability to get what needs to be done. you got to understand Christ in you. Then it says, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The hope of glory. See, the hope of joy, the hope of peace, the hope of beautiful, the hope of honor, all that is the hope of glory, and that's only because of Christ in you. The hope of eternal life with the Father and the Son, the hope of everlasting life. The hope is spending eternity in heaven. See, God said it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. The hope of reaching that destination because you got Christ in you that's going to lead you that way. So you got to understand Christ in you. And then over here in, in uh, 2 Corinthians, even though you got Christ in you, Paul tell us to examine ourselves. In 2 Corinthians 13, 2 Corinthians 13, let me hurry up and get to this because I want you to get this. In 2 Corinthians 13, understand, 
4 through 6. Understand what this powerful man of God is telling us through the Holy Spirit. And this is what he's telling us. He's telling us in verse 4, he starts off, for, for though he was crucified, he's talking about Jesus. Jesus was the one that was crucified. Jesus Christ was the one that was crucified. crucified. For though he was crucified through weakness, he's talking about in the flesh. Yet he lived by the power of God. Yet he lived by the power of God. See, death couldn't take him because the power of God gave him life. And when you got Christ in you, you got the power of God working for you too. When you know Christ is in you. For we also are weak in Jesus, but we should live with Jesus by the power of God. And we should live with Jesus by the power of God. You understand? You cannot live with Jesus by yourself. You cannot live with Jesus by your own powers. You can only live with Jesus by the power of God. And you got to understand the power of God. One of the powers of God is the secret that Christ is in you. Now, when you pick up that power of God that Christ is in you, then you can understand how to live. Then you can understand how to overcome. Then you understand how to be conquered. Then you understand how to be victorious. And then you understand how to be a winner through Christ Jesus. But he says, but, but we should live with them by the power of God. It's not by yourself. And then Paul goes on to say in verse 5, you got to catch this now. Then Paul goes on to say in verse 5, he said, examine yourself. He said, examine yourself. Look into yourself. Analyze yourself. Whether you be in the faith. And he's talking about whether you be in the faith. And this faith that I'm talking about is the faith of Christ. Do you have your faith in Christ? Do you have the faith that Christ is in you? Examine yourself. Are you walking around with doubt about Christ being in you? Are you walking around with doubt about being born again? Are you walking around with doubt about the Holy Spirit? He said, examine your faith. And if you got any doubt, cast it out. He said, if you got any doubt, cast it out. Then he goes on to say, prove your own self. He said, check your own self out. Prove your own self. Test your own self. Check your own self out. That's like I was telling. Check out what's inside of you. Check out what's going on in you. Is Christ in you? Is Christ really in you? He's saying, check that out. Because Christ can only be on you through faith. So he said, examine your faith. You understand? He said, examine it. Because it's so easy to walk away from the faith. Y'all don't understand this. It's easy to walk away from the faith. So you got to guard your heart. You got to guard your mind to make sure you stay in the faith. So he said, examine your faith. And my faith today let me know that Christ is in me. And I want you to know that Christ is in you. You got to know this. And then he said, goes on, he said, know ye not your own self. Now he's saying, now you can't examine yourself because you don't know yourself. So otherwise, he said, you should be able to know yourself. And the only way that you can know yourself, you got to be true with yourself. You can't use deception when you examine yourself. You can't justify, you can't rationalize what the Word of God say when you examine yourself. Because when you do, you're taking away from the truth. And if you take away from the truth, guess what? The truth can't set you free. But I'm going to tell you, Christ is in you. Examine yourself to see if Christ is in you. Are you living in righteousness? Are you living in love? Are you living in joy? Are you understanding peace? Are you living by the word of God? If Christ is in you, you're going to follow the word of God. You're going to live in righteousness. You're going to do what's right. And you're going to live to please God. So examine yourself to see if you're doing these things because if you're doing these things that means your faith is right because you understand that Christ is in you you understand that Christ is in you then he said know ye not your own self how that Jesus Christ is in you he said how Jesus Christ is in you how Jesus Christ is 
in you. Except you be reprobated. Except you be reprobated. And to be reprobated is to reject. Except you reject. Except you reject. Except you reject that Christ is in you. So today I'm telling you, don't reject that Christ is in you. Believe and know that Christ is in you. Believe and know that Christ is in you. Because when you know that, when you know that, that's when you become powerful through Christ Jesus. That's when you know the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you and directing you. That's when you know your mind is going to make the right decision because you understand the mystery or the secret of the, that Christ is in you who is the hope of glory. Who is the hope of glory. Now verse 7 say, now, I pray to God that you do no evil. He said, I ask God that you do no evil. So he prayed to God that you do no evil. He don't want you going around and doing evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that you should do that which is honest. That you should do that which is honest, though we be as castaways. Though we be as castaways, as castaways, no, that they be as castaways because the law, the Sadducees and the Pharisees couldn't accept what he's teaching. So they see him as a castaway. But let me tell you, he's not the castaway. He was an apostle that God used as a messenger that we can be delivered and that we can live a righteous life through the power of Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. That's why he is letting us know that Christ is in you, that Christ is in the true believers, that Christ dwell in the believer. God, 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 God told us and Jesus told us that they will abide with us. They will stay with us. But I will never leave you nor forsake you. Understand, Christ is in you and humble to who's in you. Then Romans 6. Go with me to Romans 6. 6 right now. In Romans 6, 6, it says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Christ. That our old man is crucified with Christ. The body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So if Christ is in you, all is really what it's saying is that you shouldn't be serving sin no more. Sin shouldn't be your master no more. Your sin for nature shouldn't be ruling you no more. Guess who should be ruling you? The Christ that is in you. The Christ that is in you should be ruling you now. Because your sin is dead if you let the spirit of Christ that is in you work. The spirit of God that's in you work. And then it goes on to say in verse 10, 610 it say, For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lives, he lives unto God. That he lives unto God. So, if Christ is in you, and you know Christ is in you, I'm telling you that Christ is in you, you should be living on the God now. All your life should be built around God. All your life should be built around Jesus. All your life should be built around the Holy Spirit. All your life should be built around the Word of God. Because now you live on the God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And He said, I take care of everything else. You understand? That's my paraphrase. But that's what I'm talking about. Living on to God and not on to self. Making a sacrifice of cutting yourself loose, making yourself not the head, but letting God be the head. And only way you're going to let God be the head, first you got to understand the mystery is that Christ is in you. And then you got to submit and let Christ work in your life. Now go with me to Romans 8.10. In Romans 8.10 it said, And if Christ be in you, 
And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. He said, if Christ be in you, this flesh is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. The body is dead, the spirit is life. And when you let that spirit, which is Christ in you, rule in your life, the flesh cannot control you. Therefore, sin does not have dominions over you anymore. But it only works if you believe it. That's why Paul said, examine yourself. To see if you're in the faith. Examine yourself to see what you're thinking. Examine yourself to see what you believe in. Examine yourself to make sure that you are following Christ. Examine yourself to make sure that you know Christ is in you. Examine yourself to make sure you are giving all honor and praise to God. Examine yourself to make sure your life is dedicated to Jesus and God in the Word. Examine yourself to know that the Holy Spirit and dwells in you. Examine yourself to eliminate all doubts that goes against the word of God. To eliminate all doubt that goes against Jesus. To eliminate all doubt that goes against God. To eliminate all doubt that goes against the Holy Spirit. But you can't do that unless you really understand that Christ is in you. Unless you really understand that Christ is in you. Now go with me to Ephesians 3.17. Ephesians 3.17. In Ephesians 3.17, it says that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. He said, Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. So Christ can live in your heart, but understand this, he can still only do it by faith. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. That God, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, and you must be rooted and grounded in love. First Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, check it out. First Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, give you a good idea about what love consists of, and it's called charity. But yeah, that you be grounded, that you be rooted and grounded in love. So if Christ dwells in you, there's no way that you shouldn't have a love life. There's no way that you shouldn't be able to express love to others. There's no way that love can't be seen through you every day in your walk of life. There's no way that they can't see the spirit of love working through you if you got Christ in you. That's what you got to understand. And now go with me to Romans 13.10. Romans 13.10. Understand Romans 13, 10. Romans 13 said, dig this, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. So if Christ is in you, that means you wouldn't go out there and hurt nobody. That means you wouldn't go out there and do wrong to nobody. Do you understand that? If Christ is in you, you won't be out there trying to hurt nobody or harm nobody or do no deceit to nobody or do anything that might hurt somebody. You wouldn't be covering what they get. You wouldn't be hating on them. You wouldn't be eating it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be eating envy towards them. You wouldn't be jealous towards them. You understand? You wouldn't be thinking you better than them. You understand? See, you got to understand. See, when you, uh, uh, love don't harm nobody, and if love don't harm nobody, that means then that uh, you won't think about doing evil to somebody. That means you won't rejoice in evil, because love don't harm nobody. Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So, if you understand the mystery of Christ in you, that means you understand that you got the love of Christ in you. And if you got the love of Christ in you, that means people should see the love of God through you. They should see the love of Christ through you. They should see the love of God through you. They should see the love through the Holy Spirit working through you. Your life will be based 
up on God's love and not the world's love. And God's love honor and respect people. God love don't harm nobody. God love don't do wrong to nobody. So if you got Christ in you, you have compassion on people because that's part of love. Because that's part of love. But first you got to really understand the secret of the mystery is Christ in you. And now you got to understand that you got to submit to that spirit of Christ that's in you. So you got to understand that in order for you to make it work. And then you got to constantly examine your then you got to constantly examine your faith to make sure that you're on the right track, <laughs> to make sure that you're doing the right thing. So you got to examine yourself. You understand? And God to take care of the rest. And then God to take care of the rest. And love is the fulfillment of the law. But now, go with me to this last scripture in Philippians 2 5. Philippians 2 5. I just had to bring these scriptures to you today because I wanted you to understand that Christ is in you, not outside of you. Just like the kingdom of God is in you, not outside of you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are in you. But Christ is in you, what I want you to understand today. But uh, Philippians 2 5 says, it says real quick, the, the last verse. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, that which was also in Christ Jesus. So you got to have the mind of Christ. So you got to have the mind of Christ. So you got to get into that gospel and study that gospel and meditate upon that gospel and apply that gospel in your life and believe in that gospel. And you will find out that Jesus lived to please his father. 100% and then falter. So have the mind of Christ in you. You live to please God. You live to please Jesus. You live to honor God. You got to have a mind of love for God like Jesus had the mind of love for God. You got to love Jesus. You got to love the Father from your mind and from your heart. So you got to put on the mind of Christ. And you understand? And I'm going to tell you something. The the only way that you can really put on the mind of Christ, first, you got to believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that he died for your sin and that he rose again and he's at the right hand of the Father. You got to believe that and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, as your Master and your Savior. So you got to start following the teachings of Christ. You got to start following the teaching of the new covenant. You got to let it become a part of your life so you can put on the mind of Christ and become the person that you are through Jesus Christ. You got to understand that you've been born again. So if you don't know Jesus today, it's a good day to be born again through Jesus. It's a good day to make him the savior of your life. It's a good day to make him the Lord of your life. And it's a good thing to receive his spirit in you and be born again. And be born again. Oh, Heavenly Father, everyone that's here this that is not saved, Heavenly Father, that is not born again, Heavenly Father, I ask you to touch them today, Heavenly Father, and let your spirit start working in their life, Heavenly Father. Help them to see the light and help them to get on the right track and help them to cut that evil loose, Heavenly Father. Bless them today in the name of Jesus. Now, I hope this was a blessing. I hope you like it. As you know, I'm on YouTube under Thomas Patterson. Feel free to view my videos. Feel free. It might be a message for you there under Thomas Patterson on YouTube. That's my channel, Thomas Patterson. Go check some of them out and let them be a blessing to you. Because God just want to bless you. But he can only bless you if you willing to receive the blessing. And then now, Father, I ask you to bless everyone that hear this message today, Heavenly Father, that you be with them, that you take care of them, that you watch over their, fam their families, and that you share your love with them, Heavenly Father. You share your blessings with them, Heavenly Father, and to help us all to humble ourselves to you and honor you in all that we do, Heavenly Father, that you may get the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And now I say to y'all, have a blessed week.